Ken Oling joins me from Mel to talk all about their decentralized finance platform. It allows long-term crypto holders to borrow against their crypto assets. It means you can get fiat currency and not sell your crypto. He also talks about self-paying loans, loans that can pay themselves off. How? What? You're going to have to watch the episode and find out exactly how this all works. The platform is open source and more importantly, it's built on Cardano using smart contracts. We also have a chat about how he started the company with his co-founder Hai, who is a Haskell programmer from Vietnam. And he also has a team of Haskell developers over there as well. Now, for those that don't know, Haskell is quite a rare language at the moment and it's very hard to come by any Haskell developers and here Meld has a whole team of them so it's a high high advantageous position they're in now that part of the conversation is all on our audio podcast which you can listen to anywhere you find or listen to your favorite podcast so just search for learn Cardano podcast and you'll find it there now Let's get into this interview, but before we do, make sure you give us that thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and you hear more great content from us soon. All right, let's get into this interview. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. So I have Ken Oling all the way from Norway from the Meld Project, and he's going to talk all about the Meld Project and I think we're going to be educated all about DeFi and much, much more. So Ken, welcome to the podcast. Hey there. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Ken, if we could start off first by getting a little bit of a background about you so we can understand how you got into the cryptocurrency space and also how you discovered Cardano. Sure. So um, in regards to crypto, I started in 2017. Uh, I got involved on a couple of projects in relationship to ICOs. Um, my background comes from the dot-com uh, back in the late 90s. And a lot of the people that I was working with during the dot-com also ended up uh, moving into the crypto space. So based on that network, I started talking and consulting and working with people. And that sort of piqued my interest. Um, when that kind of didn't pan out, I moved back into enterprise architecture and technology and software development. And then when DeFi picked up, um, that really captured my interest because at that point I was already working in finance and I really saw the, the beauty of this massive innovation, this perpetual innovation, this lack of any rules, this ability to kind of rethink anything that comes out of finance, that became really attractive to me. And so last year, um, I was working with my co-founder, Hai, and uh, we were talking about what we were going to do in the crypto space. And this kind of attracted us, this kind of idea of working on Cardano, working in DeFi, developing something around that. We didn't know exactly what at the time. But then once DeFi really started to kick off during the DeFi summer, then that sort of made the wheels turn and really kind of the the basics behind what we came up with is connected to everybody related to the crypto space in you know the DeFi summer last year you started to see the beginnings of the bull run and lots of people were making lots of money including a lot of my friends but they weren't able to do anything with their value that they were collecting that they were building in crypto um they are here in Europe. They were having a hard time using tools like BlockFi and Nexo because of the KYC, um, didn't really allow them into it. And so I started thinking about the principles of DeFi, the idea of decentralization, the idea of trustlessness, the non-custodial, and it just kind of led to this idea of meld and being able to bridge this gap, be able to meld this gap between the crypto world and the DeFi world. Okay. There's a lot of terms there, and I think we have to break it down for the audience because I know a lot of the listeners of this podcast are beginners, not only okay. to the crypto space, but also to uh, finance. Uh, a lot don't know a lot of these terms. And so we should probably break this down and have a look at what it all means. So 
In doing the research for MELD, um, I found a definition, a little description of what it is. So I'll just read it off so I don't get it incorrect. MELD is defined as an open source non-custodian liquidity protocol for earning yield on deposits and borrowing fiat. Now, even that is really confusing to a lot of people. So let's, let's, let's pull that apart and find out exactly what it all means. So the, the, the problem that MELD is trying to solve is trying to uh, find a way for all these people that are holding on to cryptocurrencies to actually use and spend some of that value without releasing their crypto. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it, you're completely right. There's a lot of jargon that is wrapped in finance, and there's a lot of jargon that's wrapped in in crypto. Um, so you can you can break this down into very very simple terms. People have crypto, and they see the value of that increase. They see the dollar value of that increase, but they can't do anything with it. If they were to sell it, then they wouldn't see any more upside. They wouldn't see their value increase. And if they sold it, then they would have to pay taxes on it. So instead of selling it. What Mel does is it says you can use that as collateral and borrow cash. You make it sound so easy, but there must be a lot more to it. Um, so let's yeah. let's have a look at the definition and and there's little bits and pieces that uh, the protocol provides. Hmm. Um, it provides things from yield, earning yield, and uh, on deposits of your crypto assets. Is that correct? Um, yeah, so one of the, the beauties of DeFi is that the, what's actually happening in the, in the business model is very simple. So you take money, your liquidity, and you deposit it someplace, and that money starts working. And then you either get yield, which is a piece of a transaction. So the money is used for transactions, and then you get a small piece of that, that's yield. Or interest, where the money is lent out and people pay more when they pay it back, and then they get the interest. Right. It's, it's very similar to how regular banks and financial systems work in the traditional very space. Much. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, how does this then differ from the other platforms that are out there? You, you mentioned BlockFi as one of them. So how does this differ from that? Yeah. So you have BlockFi and you have Nexo and you have Celsius. Those are the three big ones based in the States. And the primary difference is when you take your crypto and you want to use it as collateral, they require you to transfer the crypto to them. You, they require you to hand over the keys to them in order for it to become collateral. Um, there's a very traditional way of handling things. It's very centralized. So it means that they take that those keys and they store them for you. Um, in the case of DeFi, what we're trying to sort of propagate is this idea you don't have to give up your keys. You keep your keys, you own your crypto, but what we do is we lock it into a smart contract as opposed to taking the keys. Right. That is actually quite a, a good approach and a nice way of doing it. So it's a very much like a decentralized exchanges. So you never give up your keys. It's always your crypto. And if suddenly someone loses your keys... Uh, if you are providing it to another provider, that it's, uh, your, all of your assets don't disappear. Something similar to how the uh, ETH, ETH uh, liquidity, not liquidity, the ETH um, validator nodes uh, yeah. work. ETH2, sorry. Mm. And they lost all so, those keys. That's a lot of ETH that disappeared. Yeah, right. This just happened a couple of days ago, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. No, so, so I mean, BlockFi and Celsius and Nexo, they're great. They're, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, but it's not so much the pros problem of losing keys. It's the problem of not understanding or not knowing what the regulatory sort of framework is going to be like in the future. What happens, you know, it's not the case in the States right now, but it happens in India. What happens if the government all of a sudden bans crypto that makes it make it illegal? You don't have your keys. Somebody else has your keys and that other organization has to meet whatever the government guidelines are set out. So we can't tell the future. And so when you hand over your keys, there's a risk in not knowing what's going to happen to them based on what, you know, different sort of rules or laws come into play. That's really interesting. So if um, I'm just trying to play out that scenario now that you're, you're, you're putting it into my mind, if I did have my crypto assets in a country where the regulations 
um, really stamped on them. And I couldn't get my assets out. Like uh, if, if I was locked in one of these other protocols and uh, the government says, no, we can't use crypto anymore. How, how would I get my assets back out? Or are they pretty much locked in and gone? Nobody knows. I mean, I don't yeah. think, I don't know of any, any precedents for that. I don't know of it happening in the past. Um, you could probably look to Nigeria, you know, Nigeria just passed some laws. Didn't, they didn't make Bitcoin illegal, but they made Bitcoin being held by banks illegal. So yeah. I don't know what happened to the Bitcoin that were in these banks. I don't know whether it was frozen, uh, whether it was confiscated, whether it was returned. Uh, but that is really kind of where the the challenge lies in in being able to hand over your keys. In other words, providing this custodial service where you don't know what the situation is. And this ties to sort of the jurisdictions or the the countries that, that MELD is working in. So we're working in Singapore and Switzerland. These are two countries that have mature laws on the books on how to handle crypto. And this is what we wanted. We wanted an unambiguous set of laws so that we could actually follow the laws and we could meet the regulations without any worries or concerns. Okay, this is great. Okay, so for a regular crypto user, we're able to borrow against our assets. Now, for someone that isn't into crypto at all, um, how how is this going to benefit them? Like, I've I've never used um, uh, crypto. I haven't bought any, or I'm just starting and I'm just trying to get into them. Um, how is it going to benefit them? So it will benefit them a bit more in the long term. So, like I said, we're trying to bridge this gap between fiat and crypto and so on the crypto side we have the crypto environment and all the cryptocurrencies on the fiat side you have banks and you have people and on the on the crypto side meld is providing lending tools the ability to lend and borrow on the fiat side we're providing a connection for banks into the crypto side and what you find on the crypto side is you find good yield and you find good interest. And so what we're trying to provide and what we're negotiating with banks on now is the ability to connect our protocol to their bank accounts and then right. allow them to provide good interest rates to their savings accounts to their in industry sort of institutional accounts and so there's a big upside for the bank side as well it's a network on both sides and so what is the big benefit for normal people that you know maybe in two or three years when we connect these the meld protocol to these banks you'll start seeing savings accounts with two three four five six seven percent interest in them like we did back in the 1970s right now that's really interesting. So with the interest rates dropping dramatically so much because uh, the reserve banks are uh, cutting interest rates. Um, for example, what is the interest rate over there in Norway at the moment? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Um, yep. I haven't borrowed something in, in years. My guess, last time I checked, it was somewhere around 3%, 2.5%. That is actually a lot higher than it is here. Uh, last, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, last I checked, oh, Norway's uh, an expensive country. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. I heard the price of beer is uh, quite astronomical at times. Yes. Um, the 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 interest rates here, if if you're putting into a savings account, you will get a huge zero point zero one two percent return. Mm. So it's uh, it's incredibly low, and this would be uh, incredibly advantageous to to uh, um, people that are trying to save their um, fiat and maybe yeah. even potentially live off of it. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the fixed income market is slowly but surely disappearing because the yield on bonds is going down. And so you see this across the entire financial sector. And so in crypto, especially in the past two years, we've seen, we've been sort of uh, very lucky to have access to these very high interest rates because the money is really working hard. Um, Meld Protocol wants to be able to build that sort of connector to multiple banks on the fiat side to connect these two worlds together so that we can start to see some of that benefit in the traditional world. Okay, very exciting. Now, 
An- another scenario I'd like to play out so uh, users can kind of understand and see this bridge a little bit more. When I, for example, am going for a loan to buy a house, I would need about 20% deposit, so some collateral, 20% Mm -hmm. of the value of the property that I'm purchasing, and then I could borrow the remaining 80% uh, to Mm -hmm. uh, purchase the house. The bank would uh, essentially own the house, and then I would have to pay it off, and then I get the ownership of the property later on. Now, how does this work with my crypto assets? So if I have 20% of the value of the property that I want to purchase in crypto, could I potentially borrow the rest for the property that I want to purchase. Yeah. So, so in the in the work that we're doing, in the sort of lending and borrowing we're doing, we're not doing any kind of leveraged lending. So the lending we do is the exact opposite. So you're allowed with the MELD protocol on a basic loan, you're allowed to borrow up to half of the value of your crypto. So if you have 10,000 or $100,000 in Bitcoin, you can borrow 50,000 US dollars worth of that. So we're not we're not going into the space of actually extending credit. Um, we're trying to help people be able to see or realize some of the value they already have in crypto. So these are very two different roles for two different types of institutions. Maybe sort of far down the line, we'll think about this idea of of having you know like you said, sort of having twenty percent collateral and then be able to borrow the other eighty percent. But for the foreseeable future, our focus is almost exclusively on having the collateral and borrowing against a portion of that. Okay. Can you see that scenario being solved? Yes, but um, I think that it's going to require a lot of very specialized financial instruments. It's going to require a lot of more maturity when it comes to the market, market size, market volatility in crypto, it's still too, if you try to sort of over leverage yourself, it's very easy to get into a very difficult position um, when the market moves as much as it does. Because the market has such high volatility, um, it's it's just too risky to do those kinds of things. And we're very focused on minimizing liquidations. So, we want our the experience that people have on the MELD protocol to be a very positive one. And if the market dips 50, 60%, like we saw a month ago, and then you get liquidated, that's not a very good experience. It doesn't help anybody, really. Um, it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And our goal is to sort of build up the market and build up our reputation as a protocol that doesn't instantly go to liquidations. Um, we actually require, we have three different tiers. Uh, if let's say you've, you've, you've tied up some Bitcoin as collateral and the market goes down, there are three what are called margin calls along the way that allow you to either change the terms of your loan or to add collateral. And this then allows you to make adjustments so you don't get liquidated. And so we really want that to be the case. We want to to have this experience. And we're pushing very hard in many different areas to be able to do that. Okay. So I want to understand these margin calls and being liquidated. So essentially liquidated means uh, you're unable to pay back the loan and you your crypto assets uh, are are uh, essentially confiscated or um, or, or taken no from- no it's 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 not that draconian no okay, okay so a margin call it means that the 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 loan to value ratio so a loan to value ratio being let's say you have the collateral which is a thousand dollars and you're borrowing a, a five hundred dollars right so the the value of the loan is 500 and the value of the collateral is a thousand um when that thousand dollar value starts to go down and get closer to that five hundred dollars then there are triggers that are set that you get a message in your mobile application the meld app that says the value of your collateral has gone too low can you please either add more collateral or pay more on the loan Uh, we have three triggers there until it gets close to but before it gets to 90 percent 90 percent meaning that the the value of the collateral is 110 percent or a little bit more than 110 percent less than the or more than the the actual loan at that point 
then there is a liquidation event. And the liquidation event takes the, the, the crypto and converts the same amount that the loan is into fiat currency so that we've now covered the cost of the loan. You, you can keep the loan. So the loan's yours, it's paid off. And then whatever the balance of that crypto is, is that's left gets transferred back into your wallet. Right. Okay. So it's essentially making sure that you can pay the loan. It, making sure that the, the books balance on both sides. And gotcha. crypto is very nice in the sense that it's very liquid. So if you don't pay your mortgage, um, it takes six months for the bank to repossess the house. Um, in the case of crypto, um, because it's so liquid, it's traded 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It means that when a liquidation event happens, that can get liquidated in seconds. So you get your crypto back, your loan is paid off in seconds, and everything is very clean and tidy. Okay, understood. So that's what happens if you can't pay back your loan. Hmm. All right. And so, yep, go on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So what then would people be, what, what scenarios would be, uh, would people be borrowing for? So uh, we can't buy uh, large assets where we're um, providing a small amount of collateral for borrowing a large amount of uh, fiat. So what, what mm -hmm. scenarios are people borrowing for? I think it, it covers a lot of things. And this is one of the major differences between the traditional type of a loan and this type of a loan, where we don't pass judgment on our customers. We don't ask you what you're going to use it for. There might be KYC that requires that based on your country, but we don't ask that question. We don't do a credit check on you. We don't have to do any of this kind of stuff because it's an over collateralized loan. So we have the collateral for it. So you can simply take out the loan and use it for whatever you want to use it for. And so this is a, a, a really big difference, whether you use it for a house or a wedding or a car, or you just want to have cash on hand to be able to do whatever or go on a holiday, all of that is completely up to you. And so we have the basic loan, which is you take out this chunk of money, uh, which we're all very familiar with. And then we also have a credit line and the credit line sets up a, a sort of certain amount of money but we don't charge interest on that. We don't charge interest on it until you actually use it. You'll get a meld debit card, and then you can use that against the credit line, a little bit similar to what a bank does. Um, and then you're able to draw down on that and you pay the interest based on the amount that you've drawn down. Okay, I did want to get into that and the debit card, mm. and I think I, I will drill into that a little bit in a moment. So you mentioned the wallet, the app, the wallet. Yeah. How does this work? Like I, I, I'm assuming I download it from the app store. I load it mm -hmm. up with some of my crypto assets. Is that correct? Can you explain to the users how this all this process works and the user experience? Yeah. So we have the Meld app. Um, it's a, it will be available on the iOS app store and the Android app store. It'll also be available uh, as an extension for the Chrome browser. And you can do a couple things with it. Um, it is the way that you interact with the protocol. And so if you want to take out a loan, then you would download the app. You would set up your wallet. It's your wallet. It's your keys. You would either transfer cryptocurrency into it, or you would connect to an existing wallet like MetaMask. So we don't require you to, to transfer into our wallet. And then you can set up the terms of your loan. Um, and then once you set up the terms of your loan, if it's a crypto to crypto loan, you just take out the loan. If it's a crypto to fiat loan, and depending on your country, then you will go through the KYC process. And then you, once you've passed the KYC process, then you'll get the loan. And on the fiat side, what happens is a wire transfer is sent to your bank with the amount of money that is part of the loan. And from that KYC process, all of the documentation that the bank needs to release that money to you is both sent to your wallet and sent to the bank. Right. Okay. That is a pretty easy and simple process. It, well, it sounds simple and easy. 
Now, in in regards to that that uh, linking up to the banks and being able to accept the the fiat currencies, you said that it depends on the country's KYC processes processes, mm. the uh, know your customer processes, which um, leads me to think that only some countries will be able to uh, go through this and uh, borrow against the protocol. Is is that correct? Or will it be available in a lot of countries? Uh, right now, the plan is it will, at launch, it'll be available in most countries, uh, except for the United States and other countries that um, prohibit cryptocurrency like uh, Nigeria and yep. India and China. Um, we're planning on going to the US in the future, but we're not going to start by going into the US market. We'll probably take a little bit of time. Um, the US has specialized regulations for lending and they have specialized regulations for, for usury licenses. And so we'll have to go through all these processes. We'll have to work with the SEC and the regulators to make sure that we meet all the right criteria. So to start with, it'll be outside the US and outside of countries that are, are prohibiting crypto at this point. Okay. Do you need a banking license to be able to operate in some of these countries? Such as um, no, Australia for... Yeah, go on, sorry. No, we're, we don't need a banking license because one, we're not a bank. Um, we're not leveraging. We're not sort of using money that we don't have. Um, all of the loans that we have are over collateralized loans. We will need to meet certain uh, consumer protection regulations in some countries uh, because typically speaking in the lending world, uh, business to business loans are, are pretty loosely regulated. Well, business to consumer loans are very heavily regulated, especially when it comes to things like terms of the loan and interest rates and these kinds of things and, and liquidation events. And so we'll need to meet these criteria. But, you know, when it comes down to, to the, in real terms, the MELD protocol is extremely consumer friendly uh, because our consumers are not only the people that are borrowing, but they're the people that are lending on the crypto side as well. So our customers are also our consumers. And so it's a, it's a, it's a much tighter relationship in that sense. And we want everybody that interacts with the protocol to have a good experience and benefit from it both financially as well as from a kind of lack of anxiety or sort of reduced risk, reduced stress. Okay, great. Now, in terms of contract periods, uh, normally when you're taking out a loan, uh, you have a uh, term that uh, you have yeah. to pay the loan back by. Now, these these ones on MELD are locked in smart contracts. How, how long are these uh, lock-in periods with the smart contracts? It, does it work like that or is it something completely different? So the, the loans are actually the most exciting part of this. Um, and you really, you would normally never hear that those two words in the same sentence, right? <laughs> that's very exciting true. and yeah. loan, right? But that's really the exciting part in this. And yes, there are, we have, we will provide um, basic loans, um, you know, with a fixed term and a fixed interest and all this. But one of the things that we're working on are new types of loans that are enabled by what you can do in DeFi and what you can do in crypto. So yes, we'll have the sort of one, two, three, five, 10 year loans that have the, the standard set of terms, but we also have what's called a genius loan. And a genius loan is a loan that is open-ended um, and it pays itself off. So you borrow, what? you pay a slightly higher interest rate and over time, it pays off the principal. You only ever have to pay the interest. It pays off the principal. And so it's a great, it's, a, it's, a, it's so exciting to work in the DeFi space because we're not exclusive to these kinds of ideas. These kinds of ideas exist a, across the DeFi space, really exciting and interesting, innovative ideas. But just imagine you take out a loan and then four years, five years in, you just get an SMS or a message saying, your loan has now been paid off. Thank you very much for being a customer of MELD. You know, hope to see you again. It's such a great thought, right? 
It, that's just weird. <laughs> but it is a great thought just 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 to have it self paid off and mm. and and getting that notification. It's it's I don't think it's a concept a lot of people will understand and and grasp in their in their heads when they're getting well, into I mean, this kind of stuff. It it does it's it's a little bit over dramatized in the sense that I'm saying that it's a self paying loan. In technical terms, it's a negative interest loan. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so um, we actually have two different types of loans that are similar in many ways. We have the genius loan, which is called a self paying loan, but we also have a negative interest loan. So we also have a loan that is a crypto to crypto loan um, that allows you to use ADA, use your Cardano <clears throat> cryptocurrency as collateral. And then you're able to take out a stable coin or an MUSD denominated loan based on that. Um, and that loan is a negative 1% interest loan. Okay. And so, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I, I can totally understand why someone would want to take out a negative interest loan It's essentially getting money for nothing. But why would someone provide that? So that's a good, you mean provided in the sense of uh, uh, the liquidity? Yeah. Well, uh, like, why, uh, for example, traditional bank, why would a traditional bank want to give out a, um, a negative loan and want people to borrow the money and then pay someone to essentially take the money? Well, think about it. Think about it a little bit differently. So what happens when you take out a loan, when you take out in our, in our case, you, because you over collateralize the loan, right? So you put the collateral in. If I can take that collateral and I can make that collateral work really hard, why? Should I make all of the money? Uh -huh. You've provided the collateral. Yes. Why shouldn't you make some of that money? That's not yes. a particularly, you know, fair or, or, you know, it's just, it's just not, you know, we are in DeFi. We are in this world that is reinventing finance. We have the freedom. We have the free hand to reinvent it. That means we have the choice to try and make it better fairer, more honest, more even, and we are doing it. And DeFi, the, the, the community is willing to invest in us. We should pay it back. So you need to think about it a little bit. You know, we're, we're very stuck because we've had this for what, you know, loans and interest rates have been around for what, 3000 years. So we have this history that when you take out a loan, you have to pay it back and more, but that's not the case if you're willing to take a step back and think about it a little bit more broadly and think about it a little bit more fairly. Okay, this is uh, getting quite exciting. So I can see that Lambo in the horizon now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see a possibility of me driving around in a Lambo. Okay, so um, how does one pay back the loan via MELD? So uh, do I just uh, simply deposit crypto assets or fiat back into the application or account itself? Yeah, in the case of fiat, you pay back the same way you would normally pay. You pay to the bank. Um, in the case of crypto, then you pay to the, uh, to the MELD account in the crypto and you pay back that way. Um, we don't have, at this point, we don't have a bridge for you to be able to pay your fiat loan back in crypto. Um, that might change. We're still under development. We're not coming out until November. But as of right now, you pay your fiat back in fiat. You pay your crypto back in crypto. Okay. So this is all getting very exciting and quite, quite, uh, seems quite easy to do. Uh, the whole DeFi space is, uh, is, is very cool. Now, uh, we've spoken about how we can borrow and a little bit about how we can um, earn on the platform as well. Is there anything else that I'm missing in regards to the, uh, the, the yield part of the platform? So I can- Yeah, so there's, no, go ahead, sorry. So I can uh, deposit uh, crypto assets onto the platform and, and earn certain percentage. I can take negative loans, which is quite, cool as well. Is, is there anything else? Can you give us a broad picture of all the ways that I could potentially earn more from my crypto? Yeah. So, so there's a couple of additional, well, in regards to earning, there's only two other ways. Um, one of them is as part of the protocol, we have a staking pool. So you can take your meld tokens 
and you can stake those in the staking pool. And the meld tokens, when they go into the staking pool, they provide a kind of insurance for the entire protocol network. Um, for people that stake that, and for people that take that risk, then the benefit is that anybody who has put into the stake pool, they get 40% of all the fees that are charged across the entire network. So you get to participate in the cash flows, you get to participate in the revenue of the protocol. And so in addition to that, when you take out a loan or you provide liquidity, um, you get meld tokens as a bonus. So it's kind of a thank you for participating in the protocol. And so what we want is we want the liquidity providers, the lenders and the borrowers to all feel a sense of participation and ownership in the protocol. They, what we want everybody to feel that they are getting something back as being part of the protocol. And that's why we hand out or we, 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 provide these rewards for uh, people that participate in the protocol, and then they can stake them. The second way is you're able to use them in our liquidity pools. We have these things called meld vaults, and meld vaults are a traditional liquidity pool. You can think of it somewhat like a Uniswap or PancakeSwap. Um, and you can use the meld tokens in these liquidity pools um, and you're able to earn yield in the liquidity pools the way you would in a, in a more traditional type of um, DEX or, or AMM. So not in regards to earnings, but in regards to the sort of functionality, if you hold meld tokens, so you've taken out a loan and you've got meld tokens as a reward or you've bought meld tokens, that entitles you to a voice in how the protocol behaves. So the MELD token acts as a governance token, it acts as a, as a vote. And so we don't expect to have all the answers for how the protocol should solve itself, you know, over the coming years. And so we're opening up um, for people to submit what are called MIPS, sort of MELD improvement proposals. And then these MIPS get voted on and the amount of tokens you've, the amount of meld tokens you have and how long you've had them means that you're able to vote on them and you're able to help shape the way that the protocol evolves. And so that's very important because we need the protocol to make adjustments to address whatever market conditions that we're going to see three, four, five years from now so we don't become obsolete. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. It's similar to in a way on how uh, Cardano works itself with its uh, yeah. voting, votings and uh, governance model. and and compound. Um, yeah. So it's it's used in a lot of places. So we're drawing on this this again this innovation that came out of uh, of DeFi um, to try and sort of be part of that community and sort of build our sort of contribution to it. Okay. Uh, another thing there I should add on is that the platform's all also open source. Is mm -hmm. that correct? So you, yes, you've gone absolutely. through the, the complete open source model so anyone can actually uh, get the code, look over it, contribute anything that they want to contribute to the platform as well. Uh, but absolutely. Also, yeah, but also take the ideas and concepts and, uh, and build their own. Yeah, I mean, you have this in DeFi, you have people that, you know, you have SushiSwap who took Uniswap, and they can both live relatively harmoniously. Um, our goal is not to create a walled garden, our goal is to become part of DeFi and participate. Like you were saying, these governance tokens, we didn't invent these, we borrowed these from other protocols. So we need to give back to the community as well. It's very, very important that we're sort of part of the community. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Now, some other things that you mentioned a little bit before, you, you spoke about uh, a line of credit, and I wanted to get into how the debit card and all those aspects work. So in regards to holding some crypto assets, I can load it up onto the Meld app on the, my wallet there, and I can get a line of credit that I can spend against. Is that correct? Yes, Yep. Okay. exactly. Now, there are other debit cards out there. I have one myself. Here's, here's one mm -hmm. uh, from crypto.com. Now, how does the meld one differ from this? We don't let you spend your crypto. 
Now that's pretty cool. That's a good one. I, my crypto <laughs> just like, doesn't disappear. It might be worth. I don't. Uh, I. I never understood this idea of a crypto-based debit card. Why on earth would you want to want to spend your crypto? What what you can if you if you have two things and you had if you have you know a stable coin and you have Bitcoin. Why on earth would you ever want to spend Bitcoin? Spend your stable coin. And so we're not offering, you know, we believe, and the whole premise here is that we know that that crypto and Bitcoin and all of these major, really interesting sort of new monetary assets are going up. Um, they will go up over time as the market expands, as more institutions come into play. So don't spend them, hodl, you know, take out a little bit, spend the dollars, spend the euro. Um, that's a much better asset to spend on than it is to spend your Bitcoin or spend your Cardano. Um, so we don't, we don't buy into this idea of, of spending your crypto. And I completely agree with that. Each time I swipe that card and spend a little bit of my crypto assets, I, uh, I wonder how much that cop cup of coffee is actually going to be exactly worth in four or five right. years. Yes, yes. It makes me a little bit nervous, but you know, it's it's a, a nice way of being able to actually spend some of my earnings. But this this model is a lot better. It's uh, it's it means that I can hold onto my cryptos for many many mm. years, hold that long position, and uh, not worry about my uh, Bitcoin pizza, my own Bitcoin pizza scenario. Exactly. Yeah. All right. And and. This is what this is how we came about. This is how Meld started. I had lots of friends that were investing in crypto and they were putting everything into it and they didn't have much like disposable money. Um, but they were very, very successful in regards to their portfolio on crypto. And so seeing this triggered this idea of I'm sure that there are lots of people out there. When it comes down to it, pretty much everybody out there with crypto um, has this situation and so yeah. when we talk to people in the market um it sort of resonates to them you know this idea that keep your crypto borrow against it spend a little bit of it pay it back in the real world and keep all of the upside okay now you you also mentioned uh, tax implications around this so mm -hmm. how how do uh, so okay if i was to sell my uh, ada and uh sell it for a uh, hundred thousand uh, and I'd have to pay capital gains tax on that. And that varies from country to country, but let's say capital gains is 50%. So already from selling my crypto assets, I lose half of my value of that crypto already. Um, now, when I take out a loan on meld in general, I know you can't answer this uh, for every country, but in general, how does that um, implicate my tax um, uh, tax liabilities? So first of all, this is not financial advice, and this isn't tax advice. Yes, there's a huge um, disclaimer on this uh, at right. the end. Yeah. So, so the idea here is not, we're not proposing that you don't pay taxes. What we're proposing is that the majority of the world works on debt financing. And we're just saying, like the whole of the DeFi space. Why should only super wealthy people and institutions get access to the most sophisticated monetary instruments? We're providing normal people with the ability to do debt financing. That's what in, in sort of formal in institutional terms, that's what we're doing. You're borrowing against your asset and you're able to then take out a loan. But remember that loan that you take out, the interest that you're paying on that, is tax deductible in most countries. Yep, okay. So I think I might have to get an accountant in as well and to explain <laughs> to our listeners the whole idea of, uh, uh, of the, the negative loan and how it all works and how it may uh, implicate on their tax and, uh, and whatnot. Yeah, so you will eventually you will have to pay your taxes on your crypto when you convert your crypto into something else. Um, so that is an inevitability. But if you can stay in your position for as long as possible, then that benefits you. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Now, on the roadmap of development for Meld, uh, what's on the cards right now? What do you have to do? What, what do you have to develop to get to market? 
So right now we're well on the way in regards to lending and borrowing. Um, we're well on the way and just starting to test uh, wrapped assets. So we're creating what are called melded assets on the Cardano blockchain. That's a cool name. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're bringing over Ethereum, we're bringing over Bitcoin, we're bringing over Binance coin, and we're wrapping them onto the Cardano network. Uh, we're very, very, like I said before, we're very much about community. We're interested in working with the Ethereum community, working with the Bitcoin community. A lot of our ideas, a lot of my ideas sort of came out of those communities and sort of talking to people and watching podcasts. And so we want to work with them as much as possible. Um, and we want to bring some of those really, really sort of fantastic assets onto the Cardano network. Okay. So why, why Cardano then? Uh, I, I think I know the answer myself, but uh, why did you choose Cardano over building this on uh, Binance Smart Chain or Ethereum? So... It started out with all of the usual things. Um, Binance isn't very decentralized. Um, ETH suffers from performance issues under high volume. It suffers from very, very high gas fees. So those were some of the initial reasons why we gravitated towards Cardano. Um, that said, once we started developing on Cardano, um, a lot more benefits came about when we started started to really sort of not digging into the code, but digging into the architecture and how the architecture fits in to our business model. So this negative interest loan, um, it can only be done on Cardano. So we're doing it, you know, it, it, the reason why we can provide that loan is because we're building on Cardano, which is fantastic you know having that kind of relationship to your technology that enables your business is fantastic so it's it's twofold the obvious you know low transaction fees high performance high throughput uh very sort of well thought out well sort of tested uh infrastructure and at the same time the architecture is really starting to shine in how we're able to use it in our developing new business models. Okay. And people say there are no smart contracts on Cardano still. Yeah, there isn't. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very soon. So in terms of a timeline of when we will start seeing things, uh, what, what kind of date? Is there a date that is set or an aim that yeah. you're trying to get things out? Yeah, so we're we're going to launch on the Gogan hard fork. So we'll be part of the Gogan era. Um, right now, the expectation from our side uh, for a launch is sometime in the beginning of November. Uh, that might change depending on what we see in regards to Cardano and their release. But that's the basic idea. We're well on the way. Um, we're working very closely. The development team that we have is fantastic. They've been contributing to the Cardano source code for the past three years. So they're very intimate with regards to Cardano. They still contribute today to the Cardano source code. And so again, it's going back to this idea of community and participation. Um, so we're very abreast of everything that's happening um, in regards to the Cardano development. And we're trying to develop at the same pace so that we're able to launch at approximately the same time. Yeah. Okay. So in um, regards to uh, how people can participate and get involved with MELD, uh, are you offering any sort of uh, token launch or something for this uh, MELD token that you're doing? Or are you providing a, a stake pool or something where we can gain MELD tokens? What's, what's the story behind that? So yeah, so that's actually the, the probably the most exciting and the most relevant thing uh, to talk about right now. Um, we are creating what's called an ISPO, an initial stake pool offering. So this is a fundamentally new way of being able to, as a community, participate in a project or in a protocol. So what you can do is you can delegate your ADA to the MELD ISPO stake pool. And excuse me, in exchange for that, when we get ready to launch, you will be airdropped MELD tokens. 
So you're providing support for us by contributing to our stake pools. And in exchange for that, we then airdrop you meld tokens. We believe that this is the most fair way to launch your platform, launch your protocol, launch your cryptocurrency. In formal terms, it doesn't cost anybody any money. Uh, so they're not paying for it. It allows for massive community participation, massive community engagement. They get to see the progress. They get to follow the process along the way. They get to see all the sort of benefits that are going to happen. Um, it allows us to be able to offer both a private sale, but also offer to the community um, in the same way. And we're just we're we're super fired up by this idea of launching the first ISPO. We're not the ones that came up with it, the idea, but we're the first one to actually launch uh, a formal ISPO. And it happens uh, day after tomorrow on July first. Okay, so with the uh, ISPO, I essentially delegate as I would to a uh, any other Cardano stake pool. And what are your stack pool fees set at? Will I still get a return on my ADA in regards to the uh, you know the average five percent return, and then also get uh, the um, tokens, the mail tokens in the future, or uh, is the fees on the server on the stack pool set to one hundred percent, and you're taking all the um, rewards? So, so <clears throat> we've been having a lot of dialogue with the community about this. And what we've done is we've done both. So we have two sets of stake pools. One set is set at 50-50 and one set is set at not 100, but it's set at 99%. Um, so on the 50-50 one, it is what it sounds like. Uh, we keep 50% of the ADA and you keep 50% of the ADA. And then you get uh, meld tokens as well. In the case of the 99% one, then we keep the majority of the ADA and then you get uh, the majority of the meld. So obviously in the 99% pools, then you're going to get twice as much meld tokens at the end as you will in the 50-50 pool. But we offer both depending on what your sort of in, in your engagement level is, what your interest level is. Right. That's actually a really cool approach. So I, I was expecting only one pool or something to... Uh, I have to delegate to, and uh, it'll be set to 100%. So I can still earn a little bit of ADA on the side, as well as earning uh, meld tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, cool. we we had a lot of dialogue in the community, and they were very clear that that uh, a lot of people. Uh, well, actually, we had a, we had a very polarizing conversation about it, and a lot of people were very adamant about just getting meld, and a lot of people were very adamant about getting some ADA as well, not just getting meld. And so there was no Off reason why we, exactly. There's no reason why we have to say one or the other. Okay. Right. So how can people participate in this? Uh, they'll search for MELD, M-E-L-D as a ticker. Hmm. Yep. Nice. Yeah. The stake pools are up and running. We already have, we're just under 5 million ADA staked already that was we haven't fast. even started yeah yeah I was super <laughs> surprised very very happy about the the community involvement so far um but we have we have two stake pools up and running now we have a third that's coming up in the next couple of days uh so you can choose which one you want to go into now you can just go to your dataless or your yoroi uh wallet and just search for meld and then hit delegate and that's what it comes down to so you can delegate for as long as you want or as short as you want so we're not there's no sort of requirements if you want to delegate only for a month or two um, that's fine uh, if you don't know about it until a month from now that's not a problem you can delegate later on as well um, so we want to make this again the whole idea here is to try and how can we make this as fair as possible you know we have the option we have the choices well, let's let's take advantage of them. Let's utilize them, and we think that that the ISPO is the fairest way to to be able to participate in a project. Okay, sounds like I have to open up another wallet. Hmm. <laughs> okay. That's what we would like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you provide any uh, uh, test net incentivized incentivized test net rewards or anything like that, or is it purely just going to be the ISPO? No. Um, we will have 
private betas. Um, we, in about two weeks, we're going to be starting the process of the MELDAP and MELDAP testing. So there will be some um, incentivization for signing up for the MELDAP. Um, but none of this is, is um, actively running just yet. It'll come over the next couple of weeks. We'll be launching the first version of the MELDAP over the summer. Uh, so people will be able to get their hands on it. They'll be able to start to sort of feel it. They'll be able to see in the MELD app how much MELD they're earning in the in the ISPO stake pools, these kinds of things. We'll be able to start to use the MELD app to communicate in reference to governance um, and sort of get the process in place in sort of a lead up to the actual launch. Okay. I'll be watching the uh, social media accounts for MELD and retweeting, I think, on a regular basis Please. to to keep people informed. All right. Now, what are other references, links, uh, social media accounts? Where where can we go to find more about Meld? Um, you can find us on Twitter, Meld Labs. You can find us on Medium as Meld Labs. But the easiest and best thing is just go to Meld.com. M-E-L-D.com. Great. Excellent. I'll make sure those other links are actually referenced in the show notes for this podcast episode so everyone can find them. Ken, thank you so much for joining me on this interview. It's been absolute pleasure talking to you and learning more about DeFi and more about the MELD application. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a great time being here. Again, thank you so much, Ken, for sharing all of your information. I'm sure if our listeners and audience didn't know anything about DeFi before, they sure do now. All the links and everything that we've mentioned are in the description below, so please check them all out. I've already delegated to the MELD pool, the 100% pool, and I hope to earn some of those MELD tokens as soon as possible. So I have had to split my own wallet to delegate to MELD and delegate to our own stake pool. It's a little bit weird not delegating to your own and you can do so too and support our show and this podcast and this video YouTube channel uh, by delegating to our pool Ada Oz. It'd be much appreciated. Now, if you don't delegate to us, sure, that's okay. But please consider giving us that thumbs up, clicking that subscribe button and hitting the notification bell and you hear more great content from us soon. Right. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast Gotta get it hype, crypto is what we like But this is not investment or financial advice Gotta do your research